everybody and welcome back to the Mournville Community Library and this month's creativity kit is English paper piecing. So in front of me is actually an English paper pieced quilt that I've done. Um, I actually did this quite a few years ago and the pattern is, they call it the grandmother's um, flower garden. And most of the time it's done a little different but this is my take on it. And so as you can see, it has lots and lots of flowers on it. And actually this quilt, and we'll show it to you entirely, is it has 92 um, English paper piece flowers. And the special thing in it is it actually has eight butterflies in it also. So for, for one thing, English paper piece. What is it exactly? And the best way I can describe it is, is that you might have heard of paper piecing or foundation paper piecing. And with foundation paper piecing and actually this is usually what you get. You get a piece of paper and it's got one to this case to 17 and what you do is you start with the piece in the middle and you gradually build it up, two, three, four, but you do it on machine. And it's pretty, you can make some amazing different um, designs that are pretty complicated with foundation paper piecing. So with English paper piecing, you do it with paper, but you're going to be using almost like a cardstock paper. And actually I have them right here. And so you're going to start with papers like this. And what it's going to do is you're going to take your fabric and you're going to put it around. And so the difference between foundation piecing and English paper piecing is you're going to be doing English paper piecing by hand. Okay? So that's the best description of the difference between the two of them. So in the library, we actually have both type of books. And let me show you. So this is called Hexi Quilts. And this is actually what your flowers are going to be made out of is from hexagons. But, and sorry, not but, but here is foundation or paper piecing. So you can see how complicated you, ca you can do with um, the foundation paper piecing. And they're beautiful quilts. It's just a little different. Um, the nice thing about um, English paper piecing is let's say you're going on a trip and you want to take a project along and you can actually grab your hexagons you grab a pair of scissors, some fabric, and it's portable. You could do it in the car. You can do it so many different places. So I'm going to show you now um, a sampler quilt that I did of English paper piecing. So you saw the first quilt, which is just a uh, grandmother's flower quilt, my design. Um, it's not licensed, to you, so you guys can do it. <laughs> And then this one is actually a sampler of English paper pieced. Just to give you an idea of some of the different ones that you can get. So each one of these at one time had paper behind it. Then we have the circles, we have hearts, um, we have um, the tumbling blocks, and then we have, it's almost like a Dresden plate, but not quite. And then we have, also the whirling one. This one is kind of like a whirly jig. I'm not exactly sure the proper term, sorry about that, but it is um, a nice sampler of some of the ones that you can use for English paper piecing. So each one of these, actually I had paper on it first behind it, and we're going to show you how to do just a flower. And that might get your toes into it and make you go, I never want to do this again. Or it might want get you to explore English paper piecing. So for your 
craft or your kits that you're going to get is you're going to get 14 and it is actually called a one no one and a half inch hexi and it actually is not the whole piece it's actually from this point to this point is one and a, one and a half inches so on this one this is three quarter inch hexi so that's so you can go up to two th two and a half three inch hexes or what you can also go down to and i've actually seen somebody do half inch hexes which is tiny 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 okay so then in your kit so you're going to have 14 of these you are going to get you're going to get a needle and you're going to get some thread and you are going to get one dark square for the middle of your hexes. Usually it's a yellow center but we're going to do um, a dark center because we have light color for your outside of your flowers. And you're going to get one of these lovely pieces to do the center, okay? And then we're going to teach you how to do this. So once you have your fabric, you're actually going to, um, we're going to actually give you a template. So this template is actually is as you can see a quarter inch bigger around for your your um, English paper piece piece so what I did is then I took the my lovely template and I actually put it on the fabric and as you can see I traced around the fabric and that's and then I cut it out so there is the size that you need to cover your paper a quarter inch bigger than your piece of paper so you're going to center that properly and um, I'll show you exactly why you should try to be as properly measured because that is going to be um, your seam okay so next what you're going to do is um, I took a different color so it will show up better when I'm doing it because if you're using a light fabric it's not going to show up very well and also I have found out that bulldog clips and I found these really cute ones at Hunter's but if you wanted to uh, you could go to the dollar store and actually pick up some bulldog clips and all it does it just holds your fabric a little bit firmer and so now what you're going to do is you're going to actually go right through your fabric and your paper and what you're going to do is you're going to go all the way around and it can be big stitches it doesn't matter but it's really important when you get to the corner to the edge where the two pieces meet you're going to be very careful and you're going to fold it over so that you have a nice tight corner and it is important to try to make it as tight as you can to make really sharp edges for your flower. Okay, so that's how I did it. And I'll show you how I went to the next corner. Sorry, my hands are shaking.
and now we're going to get to the next corner. Sometimes I fold it and then I push it down. So here's my next corner. And then when you get to where you started, all I do is, and I'll show you on a different one that I've done. So all I've done is when I got to this corner, I just put another knot. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go do all your pieces first like this. Okay? And actually, I tried to do it with, um, I punched holes into the paper, but it was too wiggly. So that's why I'm suggesting just to use a pin like that. It holds it nicely. So once you get to this point and you have all of these done, it will make the center of your flower. Okay, so that's the next step. So the next step, what you're going to do is you are going to take your flower and you're going to take two of them and you're going to put them as much as close as, as you can together. So then what you can do is you can take your lovely bulldog clip again and you're going to pin them together, but it doesn't have to be done like that, okay? You can just use your hands to do it too. So there's not really a lot of special equipment that you need to make this. So now I'm going to get my white thread that I'm going to use. So now you're going to have your needle and your thread and this is going to be really important. What you're going to do is when you start your needle is that you are only going through the fabric. And actually that's a little bit too big. So you're going to just do it like this and you are going to pull it through. Is my thumb in the way? I think you're good. And then so what you're going to do is you're going to take a little, then you're going to the next stitch. So you're going to go through both of them. And um, that's one of the reasons I said that you have to do it kind of tight. Do you see how you can't even see the needle, the threads for what the needle I've pulled through? And that's because I'm not going through the fabric, through the paper, and through the fabric again. I'm only just going small stitch right through here, through to there. And can you see it? Maybe I should have used a dark thread to show you how to do it. But what you're doing is just taking tiny stitches and you're going to go all the way to the corner. And when we get to the corner I'm going to show you something else. Okay. So I'm getting close to the corner. I'm going to take my bulldog clip off and I'm just going to go up to the corner. Again, not going through the paper and just going just almost there. And when you get to the corner and you have these folds on, make sure that you're not doing just the fold, but you're actually going through your corner to your fabric. So I don't know if you can see that. See how I went, made sure it was under the both of them? And I'm gonna actually do a second stitch right there because it just stabilizes your corners a little bit more and of course I put a knot in it and if you ever want to do it um, some there's um, called thread conditioner 
And all it is is if you have a candle or something like that, what you can actually do is just run your thread through the candle and get a little bit of wax onto your thread. And it just makes it a little bit easier. You know, it's funny. You're the second project to say that. Many of you were watching the book binding videos earlier, and you said pretty much the same thing about book binding thread. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we've got our first one, and you can see, you might be able to see a little bit of threads, but what happens is once you take this off, it's going to just um, go into the fabric. You're not going to see it very much. So now you're going to take your second one, and you're going to do exactly the same thing. And I actually did a little bit backwards, but it doesn't matter. So again, if you have one, it's kind of nice to have them, but I'm going to put it right there. Okay, and so we're just going to sew on exactly like we did, matching the corners as much as possible. But like I said, if there's a bit of a gap and they're not exactly cornered, once you take the papers out, it's going to make a lot more sense. Okay, so we're going to do again, we're going to double sew the first corner and making sure that we do not get the paper, but we're getting the fabric. And just for, to make it a little bit more stronger, I'm doing a second one. Okay, and then we're gonna go Again, we're going to make sure if we have the fabric, fold, uh, the fabric folded over that we're going to go to the paper all the way through, but not through the paper. And I'll show you in a minute, a little bit later, why you don't want to do that. So now you're going to go all the way around and you're going to put flower petal and after flower petal until you've got it all the way sewn, okay? So I'm gonna stop this one for right now. So I'm gonna stop right now, and I'm gonna show you what you're going to do once you have all the flowers on, okay? Because you're gonna have all these floppy bits on and you're going like, well, how does that make a flower? So what you're gonna do next is, this is one that I have a little bit more sewn and you can see the dark basting, why it's so good, because you can see exactly where your basting threads are. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to sew this piece together and I will be back as soon as I thread my needle. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna show you how to finish this seam. So you know now how to put these together and you're gonna go all the way around. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have these floppy pieces. So what you're gonna do exactly how you did here, you're going to do exactly the same through the fabric, but not through the paper. And you're going to put your needle through there and like I said, I just do it a second time just to make sure I have a really tight corner because that's where the stress is going to be. And now we're just gonna go all the way up. And I could put my bulldog clip on, but you'll find out as, as the more you do this, the firmer it's going to feel. I'm using pretty small needle and you'll get a little bit bigger needle. So that's gonna be, make it a little bit easier. So when you, like I said before, when you get to the corner, make sure that you go all the way through, but not through the paper. And then I'm at the corner and just doing a double stitch. And then you're gonna end your threads like you usually do. So what you can do is 
You could do a third one since you're at the corner. And usually what I do is when I get to the end is you see all the stitches and what I do is I just go back through enough of them and pull it through and then I cut my threads. So you won't be able to see the end of the thread right there and you're going to cut it off. So now you're probably thinking, okay, I've got my flower done. I've got my flower done and I've sewn it all the way around. When do I take these papers out? Now you can take the papers out, but it's really important until you have it surrounded, do not take the papers out. And so what I'm going to, so this is how it looks on the back. It looks pretty cool, pretty tidy looking. If yours doesn't look that way, that's okay. It's your first one. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take some scissors and very carefully, what you're going to do is you're going to cut the basting threads. Because you only want to cut the basting threads, you don't want to cut the fabric. So as you can see, I'm cutting, bringing it up and cutting it. And if you have some sharp scissors or some dull scissors, it doesn't really matter. You just have to be careful. And now I can go back to where my knots are and pull it out, which is pretty cool. if I cut the threads enough. And then I'm going to use this. And then once you have all your basting threads taken out, you can actually go like this and then it's a lot softer. Okay, and that's how you take it out. And you can see it's pretty cool. So our next time that we're going to show, we're going to show how to finish this off. So there's a couple different ways that you can finish this off and I'll show you one way that we're suggesting. Okay, I hope that's you enjoyed this and um, would love to see it. Thank you.